Welcome to the Driving the World podcast series. I'm your host, Cully Holland. Today we have Tim Schumann, who is our service manager and international standards engineer, and we'll be discussing the differences between IEC and NEMA electric motors. How are you doing today? Good, Cully. How are you today? Doing wonderful, and we're going to talk about NEMA versus IEC motors. So kind of what's the difference and uh, why are there two different designations? Okay, well, good. It's a great topic to discuss. Um, so NEMA. NEMA stands for the National Electrical Manufacturers Association. It's a U.S.-based trade organization. Um, does a lot of lobbying up on uh, Washington, D.C. for energy efficiency laws and, let's say, smart buildings that we talk about today, things like that. They cover various products from motors generators, lighting, wires, cables, um, you know, they're uh, an organization that represents, let's say, uh, automation as well. So um, kind of a lobbyist group, but also a standards development organization, which is very important to know. Yes. And then IEC, they are? Uh, So IEC is the International Electro Committee. It's um, uh, an, uh, a trade organization, kind of as you well, it's more of a standards development organization uh, based uh, generally, it started in Europe Okay. Uh, many years ago. So it's kind of the European versus the American way of doing things. Uh, it's broadened its wings quite a bit over the last few years. So being international is what it says. So now um, obviously many, many countries involved from all over the world, China, Australia, Japan, um, all have active members and participate in international standards development. Gotcha. So I'm assuming NEMA and IC have some standards. So what would the standard voltage for a NEMA motor be versus a standard for the IC, since they do seem to be slightly separated? Right, right. That's a good question. So um, typically in the U.S., our power grid uh, for industrial voltages is based on 230 and 460 volts, uh, 60 hertz. So um, the motors here are, you know, for use here are, are designed uh, to operate to, uh, on those voltages, and typically they're in a double Y Y configuration, and and that's how the coils internal uh, to the motor are wound and pushed into the stator slots, and that creates uh, a universal voltage, if you will, or universal motor for the voltage, so that you can operate on either two thirty two. Th- I'm sorry, 230 volts or 460 volts based on how you jumper those out. And that's exactly the way our motors are designed. Okay. So that's the the NEMA standard. And if we're moving to the IEC, I'm assuming it's slightly different with uh, Europe's and the international power grid. Right. So um, the international power grid is typically a 230, 450 hertz supply. And there's some some oddities to that. So, for example, Brazil is 380, 60, so they have a slightly different... Uh, widening configuration for their motors, but the general globe is, uh, it's a square root of three, if you will. So if you take 230 times the square root of three, it's 400 volts. Okay. So, um, so typically those motors become what's called a delta Y configurated uh, motor. So you have uh, in the low voltage, it's, it's uh, connected in a delta configuration, and in the high voltage, it's connected in a Y configuration. Okay, so that's the uh, electrical differences, the voltage yeah. differences that we're working with. I'm sure there's something else. So dimension-wise, I mean, if right. we have NEMA, it's going to be inch, and I'm assuming IIC is going to be metric. You got it. So um, as you said, the NEMA motors are typically a U.S.-based uh, uh, development uh, standards uh, organization, so obviously it's going to be inch-dimensioned. Um, so your dimensions for your flanges are going to be um, – Based on an inch dimension, the foot height to the shaft is an inch dimension and all of those, um, so on and so forth. Completely separate from a winding because there's no such thing as a dimension winding. Right. Um, so, the you know, the subtle difference is mechanical and electrical. On the metric uh, IEC motor, obviously it's going to be in millimeters. Um, so, for example, um, the uh, shaft height or the, or the frame designation uh, DRN100, for example, on our motor, and it's true for all metric motors, the shaft height to the bottom of the foot is 100 millimeters. So those numbers mean something. Okay. So the IC keeps it simple, and the, the shaft height and the frame size is 100, it's 100 millimeters. So I'm guessing with the C-face flange on the NEMA motors, 
Uh, what are those numbers and how do they come about? Because, you know, we can't keep it simple with inches, can we? Right. We can't keep it simple. So uh, in the NEMA world, um, if you talk of, uh, about a, uh, a 56C or a 142, 145 flange or something like that, it really doesn't have anything to do with the flange dimensions. It's actually just like a metric motor. It's the foot height to the center of the shaft. Uh, so if you look at a... Uh, 56 frame motor from a NEMA perspective, that 56 dimension or size or designation, whatever, you know, many people call it different things. It's actually from the bottom of the foot to the center height of the shaft in inches times a factor of 16. Okay. So if it's uh, a 56 frame motor, shaft height to the bottom of the foot is actually three and a half inches. If you take 56 divided by 16, it's three and a half. Got to Got to make it a little complicated for us, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay. Well, that really actually gets into the frame sizes, which are some key differences between NEMA and IAC. So we've covered the mechanical frame size, the differences in voltages. Is there anything else like old wives' tales or maybe myths or misunderstandings between the two that need to be talked about? Or? Well, uh, you know, one thing that comes to mind, that's a good question. Um, one thing that comes to mind is uh, typically... Uh, the U.S. likes to make things big and rugged, so um, it's perceived that a NEMA motor is tougher because they're typically made of cast iron. And, okay. you know, cast iron's a pretty hard material, and s especially smaller IEC frame motors are generally made out of some sort of aluminum. So uh, just like our motors up through about uh, size 160, um, they're made with an aluminum frame, and above that we actually move to cast iron as well. Um, and some of that comes back to the ruggedness. Some of it comes back to um, heat transfer. Um, there's, you know, people that believe cast iron transfers heat better to get the heat out of the windings, and some say aluminum is better. Um, but what it comes down to is when they're designed properly with the right fin space and the right air movement, um, really doesn't matter. So they both do their jobs and they do them well. They both do their jobs, they do them well, and they both make the world go round. Awesome. Is there anything else we need to talk about NEMA or IEC, or does that about wrap it up? I think that about wraps it up in general. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of little intricate design differences that go down internal, um, but we can leave that for a later conversation. Perfect. Sounds good to me. Well, thank you for your time, Tim. I hope to see you on here again soon. Great. Thank you. Thanks for having me.